This is the second part of the video series. And in this part, we are discussing January 2019 current affairs on the topic Environment, Energy and Ice. The selected topics are NCAP, National Clean Air Program, ECBCR, Energy Conservation Building called Residential, COP20, CPS, Cyber Physical System. Let's go to the first topic, NCAP. The news was that government launches National Clean Air Program with a target of 20 to 30% reduction of PM2.5 and PM10 concentration by 2024. The base year is taken as 2017. From 2017 to 2024 measurement, there should be a 20 to 30% reduction, particularly matter concentration. So, what is this PM? PM denotes particulate matter and 10 and 2.5 denotes the diameter measure. So these are the suspended particles in air. If the median diameter of the particle are less than 10, they are classified as PM10. So if the median diameter of the particles are less than 2.5 micrometer, they are called as PM2.5. Thus there can be different classifications like PM20, PM1, PM.5 etc. But when air pollution is concerned, most relevant classification is PM10 and PM2.5. So making it more clear, if the size is between 10 and 2.5, we will call it a coarse particle. From 2.5 to 0.1 micrometer, they are called fine particles. And if it is less than 0.1, they are called ultra fine particles. You will be familiar with the size of grain of sand or grain of sugar. It will be around 300 micrometer in diameter. So now we can imagine how small will be this PM2, 10 and PM2.5. Nowadays, different studies attribute the particulate matter as cause of any pollution related death. PM10 can reach our lungs. It can reach the airways, it can reach the lungs and it will get deposited there. So it causes different respiratory illnesses like asthma, bronchitis, etc. PM2.5 is more dangerous because it can penetrate the lung tissues and enter the bloodstream. So it can reach the different organs. These are particularly toxic if they are containing heavy metals like mercury, cadmium, etc. They will be causing cancer, mutations, etc. So they are fatal. Fatal means they can lead to death. They are mainly dust blown by wind from agriculture, road, construction and also from vehicle emissions. So there is an urgent need to comprehensively address this issue. So that is the aim of this program. What are the features of this plan? It is a time bound plan. It is starting from 2019 as first year and it will be implemented up to 2024. Five year plan can be called as a mid term plan. But if you want a sustainable solution for uh, sustainable and long term solutions, the plan should also be long term. There is vision to enhance this plan further to long term targets. It is a single strategy, but it is implemented all over India. That is pan India implement. It is dynamic. Dynamic means it will continue to evolve based on the additional scientific and technical information available. So in terms of technical standards or implementation standards, it is not rigid. It is implemented in 102 non-attainment cities. So totally 102 cities are selected across different states. What are these non-attainment cities? They are cities which are consistently showing poorer air quality than the national ambient air quality standard. The data from the cities are monitored and those cities which are consistently in poor air quality side are selected for implementing this program. So already these cities have prepared action plans in, consulted, in consultation with Central Pollution Control Board. After the news of launching the National Clean Air Program, there was a news Environment Ministry has constituted the committee to implement the National Clean Air Program. It is come, consists of experts from industry and academy and IITK professor is included and different ministries, Ministry of Transport, Ministry of Petroleum, Ministry of Energy, Ministry of Heavy Industry, Housing, Agriculture, Health. So different ministries which are stakeholders in its implementation and fully included and in this committee. Also, Niti Ayok and Central Pollution and Control Board are included. According to the Air Prevention and Control of Pollution Act of 1986, CP, CB is the authority which is given power to execute the programs related to pollution. If we examine the last year question, we can see questions regarding environment pollution. Example, in 2018, the question was 
about environment pollution it is including nuclear explosion earthquakes acid rain air pollution so there can be a direct question on the particulate matter pollution also so apart from this we have pollution control questions from water pollution water treatment related questions were there in 2017 esc and air pollution related question when jury scrubber was there in 2019 esc and apart from this there are questions on policies of the different departments so in terms of both the policy side and the pollution side this news is clear so i have framed a question relating particulate matter consider the following statements concerning air pollution particulate matter is a major environmental issue yes it is volcanic eruptions can produce particulate matters yes it is big eruptions eject a enormous quantity of dust into the atmosphere so this statement is correct PM10 is more dangerous to health than PM2.5. This is wrong because PM2.5 is more dangerous than PM10 because it can enter our blood tissues also. Fourth, India is yet to enact a national plan to curb the PM pollution. So this was we are reading in the news. We have seen that India has come up with a plan and has come constituted a committee to implement it also. So from the options, the correct answer is A. Here, if you don't know all the four statements also, you can answer this question. This statement is very obvious, so you can directly eliminate two options B and C. From to choose between A and D, you need one more statement. If you have read the news and know that NACP is in place, you can eliminate option B and go with option A. If you don't know the news also, but you know that organic eruptions can produce particulate matter, then also you can go with option A. Reading theory also important for answering questions in a competitive exam. Next topic is Eco Nivas Samhita 2018. The news was that Power Ministry has come up with Eco Nivas Samhita 2018. It is an energy conservation building code for residential buildings. ECBC for commercial buildings are already in place. And this time the part one of the code is launched. Part one of the code is covering building envelope. Building envelope is what we see in everything. It's walls, roofs, fenestrations like window, doors, vent, etc. So this is the code which tells about how to design these components in a building. This, de uh, this design parameters are required because it helps to limit heat gain or limit heat loss. If you are in a tropical region like Chennai, here we have to invest in cooling the buildings like air conditioners so in order to reduce the cooling requirements we have to limit the heat gain so in the design stage itself by choosing proper design by choosing proper materials we can limit the heat gains in the building so that the cooling demand will be reduced in co similarly in cooler climates like a Kashmir, the aim is to limit the heat loss because there we have to invest in heating the for reducing the heating energy requirements, we have to limit the heat loss from the buildings. That also we can do by select proper selection of the materials and a proper design. So the building envelope is important in this term. Especially the residential sector is a major consumer of energy in India. And this demand for the buildings are also on rise with the requirements of our population. Further due to climate change, there is more requirement of the cooling systems. So there also energy demand is increasing. So it means that in future we are in great demand of energy. In order to conserve the energy in future, we have to build buildings with the proper designs now itself. These buildings have longer lifespans like 30, 40 years. This building code gives enveloped design standards. Apart from limiting heat gain and heat loss, it also ensures natural ventilation and daylighting so that energy required for fans and lights also can be reduced. And this code provides design flexibility also. It is not a rigid code. So it will be helpful for the designers and architects going to build new residential buildings, apartments, townships, etc. After this news, there was a news on star labeling program also, which was developed by Bureau of Energy Efficiency to rate the residential buildings. So they will give star certifications based on the energy savings achieved by the buildings. So that consumers will be aware of the energy efficiency of the building. So this will lead to ethical consumerism. The people who are more environmentally 
concerned they can go for more energy efficient homes for customers it will help to reduce the energy bills and in longer span this parameters also will decide on the home prices in 2017 there was a question on lead and griha lead and griha are also green building rating system so like when a building is given energy conservation building code certificate what does it mean first option building envelope mechanical electrical cooling and heating systems are as per the code prescribed second option building will help in energy savings for years to come third option star rating of for the building is given based on proposed energy saving so even though the first part is dealing with only building envelope the next parts will also come that will cover the mechanical electrical systems also so this code is a comprehensive code which was it is already place already in place for the company star rating is given based on proposed energy savings it is not based on the proposed energy savings it is based on the energy savings achieved by the yeah. so what is the difference between star rating and the code the code gives certain standards how to build the building so once the building is built the star rating is given as per the energy saving next topic is conference of the parties cop 24 katowice poland cop 24 is the 24th conference of parties to united nations framework convention on climate change the unfccc is a rio convention is one of the three conventions adopted at rio earth summit of 1992 other two were the convention on biodiversity and the convention to combat disease unfccc is concerned with the climate change its aim is to prevent the dangerous human interference with the climate system it is particularly concerned with the emissions human made greenhouse gas emissions which is responsible for global warming the aim is to prevent further rise in the global temperature the countries who have ratified this convention are called parties to the convention and the meeting of the parties is called conference of parties and it is the supreme body to make different decisions so we have seen major outcomes of the cops like kyoto protocol paris agreement etc so this parties will be meeting once in a year so this year 24th conference was held if you see last year question in 2017 there was a direct question on rotterdam convention thus this news is what were the major decisions in this conference some of them were partnership for electro mobility and zero emission transport that is therefore to reduce emissions from the transport sector silesia declaration development should be economically socially environmentally and climatically responsible and there was a ministerial declaration of forest for climate forest is a major carbon sink it will help you to remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and store it away from the carbon cycle which will help to reduce the global warming one possible question can be the direct question on unfcc is a question it is concerning the climate change other things are also part of rio earth summit but they are dealt in different conventions Next topic is cyber physical systems or CPS. The cabinet approved the launching of national mission on interdisciplinary cyber physical systems NMICPS which is to be implemented by Department of Science and Technology for a period of 5 years. This is a national mission launched by the national government where Department of Science and Technology has to implement it. As per this DST has launched a new program interdisciplinary cyber physical CBS is as the name indicates it is an interconnection between the cyber world and the physical world physical world is where we are doing all the activity and cyber is the space where the computation and the communication takes place if we integrate these two systems there will be more coordination and a more control on the activity and iot is also a similar concept where we are connecting different devices which enable it to be controlled remotely if we examine the previous year questions in 2017 there was a question on internet of things and as we discussed before government policy is also important especially if it is related to the technological side like digital so there can be a question on the national mission of cps also. what is the difference between cps and internet of things CPS is a physical and engineer system it is more concerned with the engineering behind the system and the computing and the communication are the core so the focus is on the computing and the communication part of the system 
it is more sophisticated but whereas in iot the concentration is on the devices the end devices and their connectivity how to connect the computation and the physical world more tightly is the question but iot is concerned with bringing in more and more devices into the network almost everything around us into the network and cps not necessarily connect with the internet it may be an individual system also like smart electricity where it will be needing the smart meters the grid connection and the control center there is no role of internet here but in iot internet is an integral part all these devices are connected through internet in iot there is a major difference about national mission on interdisciplinary cyber physical system it is to address different aspects like technology development application development human resource development skill enhancement entrepreneurship startup development associated with the cps and cps technology it envisages a hub and spoke model where this innovation centers innovation hubs will be there it will be connected to higher educational institutions it will be connected to industry and it will be government uh, connected to different government institutions this is the model which is to be implemented by this mission here also there can be different types of questions like regarding the mission regarding the technology here i am discussing on question about the technology that is cyber physical system what are the cps cps are integration of computation networking to control the physical process yes if you have read this news you can understand that cps has emphasis on emb embedded system and their internet connectivity just now we have seen that it is not emphasizing on internet connectivity but there is iot is emphasizing on internet smart grid networks smart transportation system utility service infrastructure for smart cities are examples of cps yes well they can be example of cps and they can be example of iot also in this type of question if you know that a particular statement is wrong it will help in the elimination so here if you are sure that statement 2 is wrong you can eliminate c and a and if you have read about cps you can go with b which is that these are all for today for more videos in this series please follow us in the youtube and like us in the facebook